Hello and welcome back to my Java tutorial series. As you can see our code from last episode, which we started with the Java Sound API and how to um, read uh, clips from audio files and play them in program. So we're going to start our project for this episode. And this episode is going to be on uh, still the Java Sound API, but it'll be on target data lines, which are how you um, you can use microphones and such in order to input sound into your program. Now this episode will just be um, inputting from the microphone and saving to a file and next episode we'll be going over um, actually um, like playing back that sound um, as soon as you get it in the program and being able to you know um, manipulate the sound a bit. But until then I'm just gonna learn how to set up all the different audio formats and stuff so as always, we're starting out with our main method. As we should all know by now, the public static void main string array args. I always get a P in there somehow. But okay, <laughs> that works. So we're just gonna put some uh, pretty fancy print lines. And then, just to make things easier, we're going to put this all in one big try, because since we're dealing with I.O. and audio stuff, there are going to be some exceptions, and we'll add the uh, catches as we go. So the first thing we're going to start out with is, with is an audio format, because it's going to take the raw data from your microphone, but it needs to know how to format it. And we're going to format it um, like a, um, a WAV file, or .wav. And there are certain uh, characteristics to this. Now, audio format, well, first we'll have to import it. But there are two different constructors, or three different constructors. We're going to go with the first one. And it takes a lot of arguments that don't really make sense unless you look into it a bit. The first one is the format of this audio. And we can just get it by going to the encoding enum, or encoding class, whatever. And um, WAV files are PCM signed. The next thing, if you read, is the uh, sample rate. And f WAV files can take different sample rates, but the highest is 44,100. The next is the uh, sample size in bits. We'll be using 16 bits this time. Uh, the number of channels, one for mono, two for stereo. I'm going to put two. And, you know, you can keep increasing that number for how many channels, but, you know, mono and stereo are just two of the defaults. Frame size and bytes, our frame size will be four bytes. And then the frame rate, and we'll just uh, set that the same as the uh, sample rate. Yeah, that's what it's called. And then the boolean of whether it's big endian or not, that's just the um, data format for um, bytes in it. Uh, WAV files are little endian, so you put false because it is not big endian. Uh, any complaints yet? Nope. Okay. So you can just uh, look at the. You can look up a uh, wave file formats on your own. It will tell you everything. Uh, that's. It'll tell you what everything is. And uh, this is subject to a bit of finagling on your part, but this is what we're going to be using. It's pretty. Uh, pretty standard. The next thing is that we're going to be getting a data line info. And this is um, how the Java Sound API, we went over these a little bit in the previous episode, but the data line infos are pretty much how you get a whole bunch of uh, stuff from the actual, your computer's audio system. So we're going to make it, we're going to give it target data line dot class because what we want is going to be a target data line and then we're going to tell it our format. And uh, just in case, we're going to check just to make sure this line is supported. We're going to print out line not supported. Just in case. It's not going to happen in this case because, well, this format is um, supported, but if you're finagling with you know different values in here, you'll probably want to put that there. Maybe you also have a system.exit after it so it doesn't go into anything bad, but it's always good to bug test. 
Next, we actually are going to get the target data line. And this is just going to be our target line. And we have to cast it from uh, the method that we're getting this from the audio system. Because when you get audio system get line, it can return several things like a target data line or a source data line or a clip and just a few other things. So we have to cast it, make sure we get the target data line. Then we can do target line dot open. And that makes it available. It doesn't start recording, but it makes sure it gets all of your system resources so it is able to start recording. So you do open. Not a fancy thing. And then we can actually put target line dot start. This means we'll actually uh engage data io not that it um that'll it'll start um getting data from the microphone but it won't start writing it to a file for that we'll need something else now what we we are going to do is that we're going to make a thread thread equals new thread and we're going to make this an anonymous inner class i think that yeah we're going to make this an anonymous inner class so basically it's going to be like any thread and all it has is the run method. And inside here, um, in order to do this, we're going to have to make this final. And that's fine because we're never going to set this to anything else. So we can set that to final. And in, the, in this thread, I'm going to say audio input stream. Uh, audio stream. This is now that we have a microphone set and it's reading data, this is the part that's going to write it to a file. So we're getting an audio input stream and we'll say target line. Now if we didn't have target line final it would be complaining because you can't have um, variables in an anonymous inner class unless they're final. Just Java quarks. Then we can actually give it a file and we'll just call this uh, record.wave and this will actually be saved in this directory it, it will be saved um, right alongside source since we're not since that's uh, just the default uh, path for all the Java stuff then we can actually get to the stuff and we'll do Java system audio system I mean to say sorry audio system right and we'll give it the audio stream the file type which will be an audio file format dot type and we're doing wave. As you saw there are, in type there are other formats. Not all formats are supported on all systems except wave is supported on all systems and I believe AIFF is supported on all systems. And then we need the out which will be our audio file. And now this write method, is there anything that's complaining? I don't know. This write method is a um, it continually writes. So this write method will not stop. So if you wrote anything after this, it would be completely irrelevant. But what this does is that um, it keeps writing bytes as long as the um, the uh, as long as the um, uh, target data line keeps getting data from the microphone and as soon as it started the only way to make it stop is by calling stop so what we're going to do we're gonna say try well we don't need to put this in a try at all what am I doing we're gonna do thread thread dot sleep let's make this 5,000 milliseconds or five seconds and just to satisfy this after this it'll actually tell us you know what other exceptions there are there now now everything's complaining because this can throw an exception line unavailable exception I mean you could easily just type you know basically a catch statement for exception and it'll catch all exceptions but I like uh, typing out all of my exceptions
And then this has a I.O. exception. Because what's nice about typing out all of your exceptions is that what I normally do is just print the stack trace so I can, you know, see everything and figure out what's wrong. But what you can do is... Uh, oh, that's an anonymous in the class. So yeah, there's that you can actually put, you know, different code in there depending on, you know, what exception you uh, get. That's nice. I'm just gonna put throws IO exception. What's your problem? Ugh. What if I put throws IO exception? That'd be nice. Okay, never mind. I guess I'll just have to do this the way I don't want to do this. The way that makes sense. There. Then everything's satisfied. So we'll do uh, sleep uh, five seconds. Then we can do target line dot close. Well, target line dot stop. You stop the line from recording. And then you do target line dot close. So it's always you do open so it can. Um, allocate the system resources, start, so we can start um, data I.O. You do stop, so it can stop the data I.O., and you close, so it can release all systems resources. So you want to do it in that order, is, you know, the normal way. Let me just do system.out.println ended sound test. So we should do right now, um, one thing I just forgot, we want to do thread.start. So that means um, you set up the format, which is a specific format with wave, in wave format, uh, get a line from, get a target data line from the system, make sure the line's supported, then capture that line by getting it from the audio system. You open the line so it allocates its system resources. It starts I.O., which means now it's taking data from the microphone. We have an anonymous inner class, which basically says, make an audio stream for that target line. We have a file, and whenever you get data from that from that uh, from the data line or the stream, you're gonna write it to the file, and that does that indefinitely until we um, stop the line. So we start that thread, which means it's gonna do its thing. The main thread sleeps 5,000 seconds and then um, stops the line, closes the line, and everything's done. The reason, the main reason we put this on the other thread is because this write thing, um, it doesn't go past it unless you stop the line. So if we put on the same thread, it would keep going forever. But if we put on a different thread, that means one thread can be occupied with writing the data, and the other thread can be occupied with closing the line. So if we uh, run it now, you'll see... Uh, Starting recording now, so it'll record for five seconds, approximately, and then it'll say uh, done recording. And obviously, it clipped my sound a bit. But if we look over uh, yonder, this handy file, I have this record.wav or wave, which we saved it as. And if we play it, starting recording now, so it'll record for five seconds, approximately, and then. It yeah, so it's five seconds, as you can see, duration five seconds, and you can see the sample rate is what we set it at, and the bits per sample is what we set it at, and, you know, there's all a bunch of other fun data we can use. Obviously, this is very versatile. We can set it to however length of time as we want. And if I run it, start recording. So right now, this write method is running and running and running, and this thread is just sleeping and then it'll stop the line which will stop the recording and then close the line which will release all system resources so if we go back here and look at it it overwrote the file start recording so right now this write method is running and running and running yeah it's all good <laughs> so that's how you can um, 
get uh, data into the system. Next episode, we'll go over source data lines, which will um, not only allow you another form of reading data, reading sound data and playing it back like clips, but it also allows you to have um, live data feeds, such as the target data line, which is a big implementation of actually putting it into the code and using um, audio in a more versatile way than just standard clips. So again, just remember these, if you want to put it in a different audio format, you can probably just look up that audio format on Wikipedia or something, and it'll tell you almost all the things you'll need to know. For example, like when I looked it up, it won't tell you the uh, frame rate, but I just set the frame rate the same as the sample rate, and that seems to work. <laughs> just making stuff up as I go along. But um, until next time, this has been episode 22. Yeah, sound API, target data line, input from microphone. Next time, source data line. See you next time, and good programming to you.